All right, very pleased now to get to some pregame salutations with John Coach Sal Salamantis. And uh, Coach Sal, uh, I'm going to throw a stat at you right off the top. Uh, the Ticats turnover ratio is plus 18 in wins and minus seven in losses. Is it just that simple that if the Ticats can protect the football, they can, they can win this football game? Uh, it's never that simple, uh, Lou, but uh, you hit on, you know, some, some important things. But uh, when you look at the, uh, the ratio, you know, the takeaway giveaway, sometimes it's more about where that takeaway or that giveaway happens. And, you know, I, I'm thinking of the red zone. If you get in that red zone, you can't be settling for uh, field goals. You've got to kick t uh, you got to go for TD. So, you know, sometimes uh, you you don't uh, really understand uh, the ramifications of a giveaway until the end of the ball game. Yeah, it's hard to believe that the Cats are now plus eleven uh, in turn turnover ratio after those first two games of the year, where it was something like ten to one or nine to one in the wrong direction. Um, but they're doing a great job now of not giving the ball away at the quarterback position and that was a big problem earlier than year and there's another uh another part of the game the fumbles we haven't seen any of those either so i'm not trying to jinx them let's knock on some wood here but uh, a game like tonight where you're playing against an elks team that you're on paper again it's like that ottawa game where you you're looking to win you're, you should win you're confident to win of course you got to go out and, and and get it done but uh, doesn't it make the turnovers that much more important sure andy you're absolutely right and uh, you know watching the red blacks play tonight against the calgary stampeders uh they're in the third quarter and i believe it's a 16 13 ball game in favor of the stampeders you you never know what's going to happen in a ball game unless you go into that ball game with the idea that your opponent is a strong opponent don't ever give the fact that uh, you think the opponent is weak because when you do that uh you end up in a bad bad place coach uh, taking a look at the offensive line for this tie cats we, we think darius sirocco is going to go uh, but again, you know, tra uh, we, we have John Yarbrough ready to step up at uh, center. Travis Vorncall making his second straight start at that left side. What did you see from them last game, taking into consideration they were against, a, 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 you know, not, a, not as great uh, Red Blacks O-line or D-line, excuse me. But what are you expecting to see from them today? Well, they're going to have to play very well against the, the Elks because the Elks will bring some heat. Uh, they've got a good front, and their front will get after you. Now, Vorncall, uh, I thought, played well uh, for his first time out at that left tackle spot. But, you know, remember, Sirocco went out of that ball game last week very early. I think he was only in one series, and then Yarbrough had to come in and play for him. If that happens tonight, if Sirocco cannot go uh, the full goal, then the, the O-line will be very thin in both numbers and experience because that would leave only a given as a backup. Uh, and, of course, uh, you never know uh, how a game's going to go in terms of, of injury, but you hope Sirocco can last the, the entire game. Yeah, I've been on par I've been on rosters where we've only dressed six offensive linemen, also rosters where we've only dressed six receivers and and you really pray that uh, that nobody goes down and we do have seven offensive linemen uh, just my numbers weren't wrong there but um, like you're talking about Sirocco there. On the other side of the ball on the Elks offensive line I'm not sure if you guys have seen uh, Matt O'Donnell in person, but he is the biggest human being I think I've ever seen. Uh, I right. played against him many times. Uh, 6'11", 350 pounds. Um, just like, that's like Shaq. <laughs> yeah, I, he's, he's, a, he's a big guy. He's been a stable force for the Elks for, for many years now. I, I know he bounced around a bit, but he was there before and he's back again. Um, no, no, he's been there since... Yeah. Since 2012, actually, yeah, my mistake. <laughs> uh, but yeah, how, how uh, it, isn't well, it crazy how big these guys can get and how well they can move? 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, Laurent Wynn, uh, they'll, they'll have to take a cab ride to get around the guy. I mean, it, he is a, a big human being, but at the same time, he's able to move his feet. That's the key to an offensive line play. It, you, you can't just be big and strong. You've got to be able to move. And, and uh, you see that in, in that uh, particular person. Coach, it was nice not to have, uh, you know, constant discussions around this team about the quarterback position because, you know, there was always the fear that if, if Jeremiah Masoli didn't, you know, did went out there last week and didn't play as well as he did, you know, people would be clamoring for, for Dane Evans. But Jeremiah Masoli has really kind of proven the last three games that he still can be the guy he was in 2018 and 2019. What are you hoping to see from him in this game as he kind of continues on that upward trajectory of, of Jeremiah Masoli? Well, it's not always about uh, who makes the big play, but it's about who makes the fewest mistakes. And Andy was just talking about the fact that uh, Jeremiah was very proficient with the football, 25 of 28 last ball game, never turned the ball over, and when the run presented itself, he took it. So I suspect that, that we'll see Mazzoli play very well uh, in this ball game. But again, a lot depends upon his receivers. With Addison out of this ball game, he's a little bit short uh, in that area. It, you know, we talk about quarterbacks got to get the ball out of his hands quick. Well, that means the receivers have got to be on page and they've got to be in the right place at the right time in order for him to do that. Speaking of the receivers, how, how who are you kind of expecting to step up in Braylon Addison's absence? Well, I'm still looking for Acklin and Banks to have a big ball game. Uh, they two, those two can combine uh, and take the place of, of Addison in this ball game. If, in fact, they will get out uh, from that slot position and get into those open areas that we're talking about, it's not always throwing the deep ball uh, to those two guys, but it's being able to throw that intermediate ball, the 18, 20-yard ball, uh, that Jeremiah is so proficient at it. He's, he's able uh, to be very accurate with those kinds of throws. What about the other side of the ball uh, with the Elks offensive playmakers? You have a, a few big names. You have a guy like Darrell Walker, who has been one of the top receivers in the league in, in past years. Uh, James Wilder Jr., who, uh, you know, big, strong runner, and had multiple 100-yard games all, all, so far this year. And a, and a guy we all know very well here in Hamilton, uh, Greg <laughs> Ellingson, who, uh, you know, did some great things for us in 2013 and, uh, and, and 14, and then um, ended up going to Ottawa and uh, yes, making know, one of the biggest know. plays yes, against uh, the Tiger Cats <laughs> uh, in that in that East final. And then, um, but but also my point is, um, you know, really good players. How do we stop them and slow those those guys down? In your opinion? Well, in, in my opinion, uh, you slow them down. You're not going to stop them. Those are those are great football players. But uh, as you know, Andy, in every position but one. Uh, if you started in a CFL game, you're considered a veteran, and you're expected not to make the same mistakes twice. Uh, that's not so a quarterback. And at that quarterback position, you know, the defense has got to be able to confuse uh, Cornelius Taylor tonight and make him unfamiliar with what they're doing uh, and pressure him until he proves uh, he, can, uh, he can handle it. So if if we can slow those receivers down and maybe get them off their routes early and, and make that quarterback hold that ball and become one-dimensional, uh, I think the Cat defense will play well. Coach, to that point, though, do you expect them to go after Des Lawrence? I mean, we saw him read the coverage perfectly uh, last week on that interception uh, on, on, on Caleb Ev or Sorry, that was in the uh, – but, you know, reading the goal line stance there, do you see the Elks trying to take advantage of maybe the, the relative inexperience of uh, Des Lawrence on that corner side? Well, if you're going to attack, as you know, the, the short side of the field is the easiest place to go for the quarterback because it's the uh, closest the receiver will be to the quarterback. When you go to that wide side of the field and you've got to make those 40, 45-yard 
uh, passes that, that result in a five-yard gain, uh, uh, that's not going to get you uh, very far. So, yeah, I think uh, with uh, Lawrence and Brooks on that short side of the field, those two guys have played well, and, and I think they'll hold up tonight, uh, even though the Oaks may go after them. Yeah, they certainly, the other side of that coin is the usually the best defenders would be on that side of the ball, too. And, and Cario Brooks is, uh, I think, within the locker room, considered the, uh, the shutdown uh, defensive back on this team. And uh, so we look for, to continue his good play, and we'll see if the quarterback tries to attack him or not. Coach, yeah, and, and, and understand that the, the Elks are going to try to run Wilder. And with yeah. Wilder, as you said, he's a big, strong, uh, physical-type runner uh, who can go over 100 yards on you. So they've got to be able to shut down a Wilder, and that goes to the linebacking play. If they can do that, then I think the secondary uh, will have a much easier job tonight. Coach Sal, appreciate this as always. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, have a good game, guys.